How's it going guys? So in this short clip, I'm going to talk about how to prepare for US Simile 2CK in 2025. Obviously I've made content on this stuff before, but I'm going to give you some updated slash refined viewpoints specifically for 2025. There's those of you who are in the camp of clinical rotations, you're doing things subject specific, i.e. peds, ops, gain, surge, etc. There's those of you who are in the camp where you're post-grad and you can just study linearly for the exam. There's four things you got to do regardless of which camp you're in. First thing you're going to do is you're going to pick a QBank. In 2025, your world or AMBOSS, sufficient. You can choose one. They're non-superior to each other. Doesn't matter which one you choose, okay? So some people have preferences for either. Doesn't matter. Just choose one. If you're post-grad, I want you going through untimed two to random blocks of 10, four to eight blocks per day, so four to 80 per day. If you're on rotations, you do four to eight blocks per day, depending on how busy you are. Some of you might have to be in a hospital 12 hours a day. Some of you might be on rotations that are more light where they just let you go to the library and you can study but four to eight blocks per day subject specific because you'll be on peds or surge im etc so that's the first thing you're going to do the second thing you're going to do is my free high yield pdfs in a certain subject domain so if you're on rotations obviously peds surge you're going to do those pdfs you'll notice those there's overlap between the pdfs there's table of contents cardio palm renal gastro etc the subjects that are basically the same as my individual subject pdfs but you'll notice that for each mega rotation that you got to cover information, all these domains. Okay. And people will ask about the overlap between the rotations. Well, guess what? Mitral valve prolapse and surgery is the same thing as mitral valve prolapse on internal medicine, which is the same thing as mitral valve prolapse in family medicine. So you have to understand that it's a Venn diagram, the way medicine works and there's overlap. Okay. But if you've seen stuff before, is it a big deal to review it? The answer is no. It's only going to reinforce it for you. If you're post-grad, I'd like you to do all the PDFs, but at a minimum, especially if you're rushed for time, you should do the internal medicine PDF. I would also go through the repro obs guide PDF because there's a lot of stuff in obs guide that's just unique and difficult and annoying. And so that's the second thing. Okay, so with the first we said QBank. The second is PDFs. And the another point I can make about the second thing is the Anki decks that I've put out. They're not by rotation. So you, if you get the Anki decks, which plenty of 2CK and step three people are using them, they're not going to be, here's your PEDS deck, here's your surge deck. They're by subject the same way the PDFs are. When you open up the PEDS PDF, you're going to see, here's your table of contents, cardio, palm, renal, gastro, etc. So when you see the decks, it's the same thing. And you can just pick and choose what you want to look at and suspend certain cards, but there's plenty of 2CK, three people doing the decks. Now, PDFs are free. The decks are not. There are AI spinoff fucking decks that people have thrown around that are not my decks. Where someone says, that's an errata. I'm like, it's not my fucking deck. So you got to make sure that you're actually doing the ones from my site, not some spinoff fucking decks that people have created from my PDFs in the past. And also, you're going to save time if you do the decks. Okay, so if it's going to take you X amount of time to read the PDFs, depending on your reading speed, by doing the space repetition, you can really chop out and I'd probably, I'd say you'd save at least 50% of time learning the content by doing the decks over the PDFs. But the PDFs are an 11 out of 10. They're the best resource out there. They're free. So if you're a good reader, then you can read the PDFs. But if you really need to sit and ingrain with cards, then the decks are 11 out of 10 as well. The third thing you're going to do, my YouTube clips. So there's playlists, Pete's playlist, search playlist. I am playlist, etc. People say, oh, your question is step one or step two. Well, there's overlap. Okay, so if you're concerned, click into the playlist tab on the YouTube. And obviously a separate tab while you're watching this video right now, but you'll see that I have two CK playlists. And you can chop those out while you're cooking, cleaning, brushing your teeth, flossing while you're at the gym. You can have the clips literally in your pocket like a podcast. And I have podcasts, by the way. Maybe some of you didn't know that. All the clips I put on YouTube, they're cross-posted to Spotify. They show up on all the different podcast platforms, okay? So you can also do those. So that's the third thing. So we said first, QBank. Two is going to be PDF slash Anki. The third is going to be YouTube MSQs. The fourth is going to be the CMS form slash NBME exams. Now, this is where it gets kind of nuanced. The CMS forms of the 50 question, the clinical master series are the 50 question NBME subject specific forms. And there's a different number per rotation. So in 2025, you have, let's say, eight for PEDS, OBS, GAIN, 
surgery, internal medicine, neuro, seven for psych, five for FM, three for emergency medicine. Okay. And if you're on rotations, you're going to cleave those out after you do QBank. So I want you to do QBank, AMBOSS, or your world in a certain subject. After you finish those questions, I want you to do two passes of the CMS forms for each rotation. Okay. If you're post-grad, you're going to do QBank first, then you're going to do a pass of all the CMS forms. You can do those in random mode, quote unquote, where you can wake up and just say, I'm going to do a PEATS form. And then after I finish the PEATS form and review, I'm going to do a surge form. That can prevent burnout, just mixing them up. But you're going to get through all 50-ish forms. So I want you doing them twice. So if you're post-grad, you finish QBank, you're going to do all 50-ish forms, two per day, take you about three and a half weeks. You're going to do NVMe 678 offline. Then you're going to do a second pass of all the CMS forms. You're going to do free 120. You're going to do NVMe's 9 through 15. You're going to sit 2CK. If you're not happy with your scores by the time you get to 9 through 11 online, we can remediate how you do QBank incorrects as an example. But I don't front load those incorrects. I don't have you do incorrects immediately after you finish QBank. We can put them at the end if you still need remediation. But generally, after you finish two passes of the CMS forms, you're going to be poised to score very high in 2CK. You can think of the CMS forms as NBME QBank. You're doing thousands of questions from the NBME exams. The CMS forms are essentially the NBME forms, but in subject specific. Okay. If you're on rotations, you're going to do QBank in that subject. And then I want you to calculate the number of days. You say, well, I have X number of days on my rotation. And if I do X number of QBank questions per day, I'm going to finish QBank by this day. And I need to do two passes of the CMS form. So if I'm on pediatrics for this eight forms, I need to do those all twice. So if I can do two per day, because I don't have a busy rotation, that's eight days. If I have a really busy rotation, I can only do one per day. I'm gonna need 16 days to do all eight of those twice, okay? In combination with doing my PDF for pediatrics slash the Anki, okay? So that is the fourth thing you gotta do. And then when you get to, so we said number one, QBank, number two, PDF slash Anki, number three, the YouTube MCQs in that subject. And if you're postgrad, you can do random going through my QBanks, doesn't matter. You can do the playlist, or you can go by random, doesn't matter. And then the fourth thing is going to be the CMS forms, okay, with the NBME exams ultimately. So I'm going to recapitulate right now. If you're postgrad, you're going to do UOLD or AMBOSS, all those questions. Then you're going to do a CMS form pass. It's going to take you three and a half weeks to do all 50 of those. And maybe six through eight, you're going to do a second pass of all the CMS forms. Then you do free 120, then you do nine through 15. It's going to take you maybe four months if you're studying hard. If you're on rotations, you're going to do the QBank questions in that subject. Then you're going to, while you're doing my PDFs and my YouTube MCQs sort of all simultaneously, and you're going to make sure you have enough time to do all the CMS forms in that subject twice before you sit the shelf exams. And I get students acing the shelf exams all the time. What I mean by acing is high pass or honors. So I get people who have like been poor test takers. And as long as they objectively do those things, they score very high. Okay. So very effective. Now, obviously I'm going to make more clips. I should just end on this actually. And this is mainly for those of you who are post-grad, which is if you take 2CK and you are now eligible for ECFMG certification where you, in order to get ECFMG certification, you need to have step one, you need to pass the OET, you need to take 2CK past that, and you have a medical degree. You can apply for ECFMG certification. Once you get that, you can apply for step three. The prep I have people do for step three, and I'll make a separate video on this, the long story short, though, because this is obviously a 2CK focused video, is that those step three people studying, whether you're in residency already or before residency as a postgrad, is you're going to have to redo all those CMS forms. Same for 2CK. It's the same material for step three and all the 2CK and MMEs. Studying for step three, correct. So if you're postgrad and you knock 2CK out, let's say this year, because we're still April 2025 right now, time of this clip, you knock 2CK out this summer you can pretty much accelerate through and sit step three before you even apply this year. Okay, so I'll make a video on step three prep. Subscribe my channel and I appreciate your time. That's it.